G'day, this short video I'm going to do is just going to talk about the calculation of fault loop impedance. So what I've done in on this diagram here is just to show you what we're talking about. So in fault loop impedance we have two. We have what we call the external that runs back via the neutral, back via the active, comes back in and to our point of attachment. Okay, when we get to this point here. So when we get to the main switch, all right, we then take it down through the sub-circuit to the appliance. Okay, the faulty appliance, we then come back via the earth. This part here, which is a neutral, right, doesn't come into the fault. So the fault loop impedance is between the supply active, down through here to the earth, back here, back to the neutral, sorry, back to the earth bar, via the MEN link, which is this part here, and then back out again, and then we take the shortest path. I'm going to do another video why it goes back via the neutral and not back via the ground. Because when you look at the ground here, there's a large resistance and it goes back up the pole to ground here. So this is what we call the MEN link. So the MEN link is we have a choice of going back via the multiple earth neutral or we have a going back via the ground. So I'm going to talk about that later in another video. The main thing I want to talk about is how the calculation works. All right. So the neutral here doesn't get used at all. We go back via the active, comes down, get a ground fault, comes back via the ground down the earth cable, back to the MEN link, or the earth bar, and then goes back out via the MEN link. And it takes a path of least resistance, that's why we go back via the neutral. Okay, so if we turn over the page and we have a look at the calculation, we're looking at maximum length B1, maximum circuit length, and it's calculation by maximum length of circuit. So when we get to the actual formula, all right, it's on B522 calculation, we have the calculation L max equals 0.8 times voltage times the largest active times the um, largest earth. And then I'm going to, going to explain what these are. IA times P, which looks like a P, times SPH plus SPE. They have all the definitions of what they are down here. The nominal voltage that we deal with all the time is 230 volts because you've got to remember we're doing a phase to earth fault. We're not doing phase to phase. Okay, when we do a phase to earth fault, we only have 230 volts. Okay, all right, so to explain this a little bit more, I'm just going to take this out and move it across. We have this large formula. So you can see there B5.2, so we have this formula here 0.8. What does the 0.8 stand for? Well, that's about 80%, okay, because we have 80% on the inside or what we call inside the actual um, premises from the point of attachment. Voltage, all right, that is 230 volts. Okay. SPH is the largest active. SPE is the largest or phase um, earth and phase active. Then we have IA. IA, if you look over the previous page, you'll see Four times a type B is four times the circuit breaker, 7.5 times the circuit breaker, and 12.5 for a type D. So these are the three type of common circuit breakers we see inside a house. So for example, if I had a 25 amp circuit breaker, right, times C, right, it would be 25 times 7.5. Okay. Now what's the P stand for? The P stands for if we got copper or aluminium. So 0 0.225 for copper. So basically everything between these two has a times, okay? So if we have a look here, we have a times. So the same thing up here, there'd be a times here and a times here as well, all right? And a times here. So where you have letters joined together, all right? They join together. So, like I said to you, there'd be a times here, times here, times here. SPH, that's plus. This one's times, and this one's times. Okay? But, like I said, the type of circuit breaker depends what we have in the question. All right? So if I go back to the reg book, and... We have a look here. So we've had a look at our earth fault loop impedance. We see this page here where the IA, uh, this is one back from maximum circuit lengths. 
So we had a look at our formula. And like I said, L max is for the maximum length. So that's what we're working out. Then we have nominal voltage is 230 volts. That's under the V here. Then resistivity of the working temperature in the cables per meter. So 0 0.225 worked out to be 22 times M3. Same with the 36. So that's for our P. All right. The IA, tripping current for a circuit breaker, instantaneous current. So I'm going to talk about this. So let's go back to the previous page. You'll see here, and this is where it comes from. Type B, 4.5. Type C, 7.5. Type C. So how that comes is we have the thermal part of the circuit breaker and we have the magnetic curve. Now that's 7.5. That IA comes across here. So in other words, 7.5 will um, start around type B. So 7.5 will start here. So these two curves here change if it's a type B or type C will change. All right, this graph here is for a fuse, if, and that's only because it's a thermal effect. All right, so fuses have a D rating of 0.9. Circuit breakers have the thermal effect and a magnetic effect. So that's why they don't have a D rating for, okay? And that information is found on the next page back from where we were talking about. All right, so like I said to you, if you work your way through your calculation, it's 0 0.8, which would be 80%, times the voltage times 230, say for example, a 6 mil active plus a 2.5 earth, all right, IA, so that would be 25 times um, 7.5 if it was a type C, times 0 0.225, and then my 6 mil plus my 2.5, if I had that in a question, all right? Very simple to follow through and very easy to work through, okay?